so that's where we're at. I'm going to give you guys a uh, a new nice handout map. Yeah, I'm going to pass my, that inspiration to Shen. Um, okay. Just to give him a help out. So okay. We might have things might go a bit uh, precarious down here. Yeah, so you guys are down here in this room, and this hole that you entered, you know, basically ran over the the rock came over you again as the you know the handprint appeared and then the rest of the rock slid over and uh this room that you're in is about 40 by 50 foot the ceiling is about 10 foot high 12 foot high the floor is stone however i do want to tell you that there is a it is covered by a thin layer of mud and without even doing any kind of perception check you guys see all kinds of muddy footprints all around this chamber as they start to lead out of this area into the chamber to the north. You know, there's water dripping everywhere, as you can hear. You know, the smell is of one of mildew, one of rot. There's absolutely no light in here. But I, I remember hearing someone cast a light spell as they were coming down in here. So whoever has the light spell, you can go ahead and draw a, uh, a circle template on the map uh, just by right-clicking it and going to uh, the templates or pointers. So what do you guys think? Lots of footprints. Can we perceive the size of these footprints? They're definitely humanoid. Looks like, looks like footprints of, of your size. It looks like they've... Uh manage to get through here and come down yeah every everybody uh now i want everybody to uh go ahead and in, in the dice tower everybody throw me a perception check please a good old perception check i start fumbling around in my pack and say guys we gotta go back <laughs> i'm out of brand muffins oh boy oh the, the dirt's about as good as those. Just scoop up some mud, boy. <laughs> Alright, so it looks like uh, Markesh, as you're kind of looking around and gathering your bearings down here, this actually smells like home to you, Markesh, with all of the... <laughs> I, I know, you are loving it. Now, and probably because you're probably you know, somewhat used to these types of uh, areas, you spot something. You spot that part of the wall and part of the floor had some kind of fresco, because you can see the, the remnants of different colors mixed on the wall. And you're looking at it, and you really can't tell what it is, per se, because it's, I mean, this fresco has totally been destroyed. But it, it, like I said, it, it was a pretty large fresco on, on the wall, and then it kind of, you know, carried over to the floor as well. So, I'll, can I examine kind of what was there? Sure, you can. Yeah, you can investigate it. Uh, also, there's a, a 40 foot coil of rope uh, that has a. And there's also a ladder, and the ladder. That go, you know, it does. Obviously, it looks like it reaches up to the hole, to where you know the stone slab is. Uh, actually, it was pulled down. So somebody used a ladder. Well, of course, obviously, because someone used, you know, something. All these, remember all the pulleys and willies and levies and stuff that were up top to move that stone in the first place. They didn't have the password like you guys did. Um, basically, they made a forceful entry. And you know all of their tools and stuff not only were up there, but yeah, they're they're down here as well, like the rope and the ladders and whatnot. I'm gonna pick up the rope, Dave, and coil it up and put it in my backpack. Does it look as though this was used as maybe the counterweight? Does it have rope burns on it, or? Oh yeah, it was it was part of the whole counterweight system as it you know tore the tore the stone slab, the magical stone slab off of the uh, the entrance up top. Gotcha. Oh. Yeah, I could do a bit of rope anyway, so I'm not carrying any, so it's always handy to have some. So I'll take that 40 foot rope. The only thing that you, you can tell. Oh, sorry about that. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. 
No, go ahead. I'll wait for him. I was just going to ask you guys if you want me to scout ahead, or if we want to head up out, head up here as a group. Yeah, I think uh, if nothing else, I'll take the lead unless you want to volunteer to scout. I think I remember hearing something earlier this week about always let the trust your rogue, let him go first. <laughs> yeah, and if you okay. have the new Dungeonology book. That's what I was talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, good job. Man, I, you know what? You can go ahead and add uh, an inspiration on as well, Markesh. I like that. Let the That's rogue go school. first. I love it. Just let the rogue go. <laughs> They're expendable. It's the most played class in 5e. You'll find another rogue, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you want to uh, ask the group and, and propose it to the group if everyone's fine. Let's say we send him forward and see where these tracks lead. All right, well, I'm just sure before you do that, yeah, when you're looking at that mural, Markish, the only thing that you can see that you can actually distinctively tell, I mean, like I said, the fresco, the mural, has literally been ruined. Except for, you can tell that there's like a, like a mermaid tail. That's the only thing that, out of all this hot mess that's on the wall and the floor, you can tell that there is like a mermaid tail distinctively in this fresco. That's the only thing that you can tell what it is. Everything else is just colors running, you know, through one another, and it just basically is the fresco has been ruined. So I'll look to to Cal and see if he knows of any religions that might have this. Doesn't seem in line with Tear at all, but no. you can tell me better. It's not something I recognize. Um, can I do a religion check to see if I can determine sure. what it could be? Yeah, throw it in the uh, the tower. Of all your study in the temple as an acolyte, the only thing that you remember that had anything to do with mermaids or... And in fact, it wasn't even mermaids. It was a, like an aquatic type of humanoid. And you remember the Prince of the Depths. And his name is Dagon, D A G O N. Okay, the Prince I'll of the Depths. I'll relay this to the guys. Um, is there anything that kind of springs to mind? Yeah. This, uh, this Prince of the Depths basically had slain a lot of other aquatic humanoids as well. There's a, like a huge civil war under, basically, in, in the depths of the, of the seas. Can I do a history check? Sure. Just throw it in tower. Did, did, say just Dagon, maybe perhaps from Kel or um, Ferris's check, but um, is he a uh, good or evil? Or as far as his alignment concerned? That I could that I could not tell you. I'd have to look that up. But uh, as for your history check, you remember, you know, and I'm sure you heard, uh, you know, I thought, what was it? Kellash, you did the, the religion check, right? Yeah. So I'm sure probably Kellash was mentioning this, right, to everyone? And that's Yeah, I did, re I did recite it to what I okay. remembered. So, Varys, you recall with your history check, pretty good history check by the way, you remember that there was a a merfolk and you remember this aquatic type of war in the sea of falling stars according to history and lore and stuff and this is where uh, the merfolk band together and actually you know came to power and actually beat Dagon or drove him back and thwarted his plans basically Okay, the main question is, is this connected somehow with the war a hundred years ago in the dragons? No, this is, no, this is totally different. Okay, that's what I was kind of trying to figure out if it had a connection. No. No, no connection to the dragons, yeah. Uh, a it's like a bunch of fish. Yeah, it's like, a, it's, like I said, it's a defaced, uh, defaced fresco. 
Well, I've, uh, I've done nothing but, uh, I don't know about fighting fish, but I know I can eat them. Either way, let's go. Okay, no problem. Wooden's follow? Well said. Well said. Say, hey, Omi, you know, follow these tracks up a bit and make sure we don't walk into a trap. Alright, here goes, guys. I'm gonna creep up slowly, stealthily, checking for traps as I go. Yeah, Dagon is, uh, evil, as you can get. Cha chaotic evil. Shen, do you know how to put the um, inspiration on the character? Uh, I think I got it. It's the star, right? Yeah, okay. Yeah, well, it just might not be showing up for me. So, Omi, yeah, as you're being DB or Dragon Bait, <laughs> no <laughs> pun intended there, uh, <clears throat> yeah, you're starting to travel down this corridor, still, you know, pools of water. You can see these same muddy footprints as basically it's leading you directly down the hall. And then all of a sudden, as the corridor starts to make a sharp turn to the left, the corridor kind of narrows up a little bit and then opens up to where you can see a couple on, you know, on your left-hand side, you can see actually a sort of like a deep alcove that's kind of recessed into the wall. Interesting. So Marquez will pull out and his, a huge uh, number two drawn on the floor as a grip as a glow. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Okay. Marquez will we'll pull out a shield as he's leading the group or, or waiting for Omi's signal, but pull out a shield as Warhammer. I'm gonna uh, move to there and take a look uh, around the room, see if I see any uh, sign of movement or any objects or traps or anything like that. No, you don't see anything. Uh, but the one thing that you see now that you're kind of in the this room a little bit, this this alcove, you can see that the the floor kind of rises a couple feet in this alcove. And it appears to be there are a bunch of bones that are in this alcove. And you can see this with your uh, your dark vision. And you can know I this tell what? alcove reaches the ceiling. I mean there's there's you know, probably uh, oh man, I mean there's just tons of skeletal remains in there. And there are they've been there for a while because they all look to be calcified. Is it a variety of races or any one in particular? Looks like a whole different bunch. Of, it looks like it's a Heinz 57. It just has a little bit of everything in there. I whisper a message spell back to Markesh. Okay, let's move. move okay, to move up, guys. All right. Well, it looks like they were going anyway. So you're good. Yeah, and and also about right here, there's a door where I put this. Uh, this pointer, and this this is like uh, the the brass door from the other room that was just I mean well yeah that you guys came into this area, and the, it looks like someone just literally beat the crap out of this door to get it open, you know and there's a a huge uh, there's a huge amount of footprints and you know scuff marks on the ground, the walls are all tore up looks like they. Uh, they busted the door down. They wanted to get through here. That's basically what had happened. Wait, I'll draw is it my hanging? Uh, is it hanging hammer. on it? Is it hanging on its hinges right now? No, it's just like the everything in the center of the door because it's sort of like a double push in. Basically, everything was just smashed. All of the mechanics and the the gears and sprockets and stuff were all busted. I'm gonna look at Omi and, and the group and just say, "Well, whoever had made it down here before I certainly had." A shitty rogue. <laughs> they, they've yeah. left a bit of a mess down here. As he eyes Omi from his people. head to his feet. <laughs> you guys want to look, take a look at those bones and see if yeah. there's anything interesting hidden in there? I'll, like, keep, I'll take a look forward through these doors here. I'd like to kind of yeah. stand on the, the higher part of those bones and kind of kick them around a little bit, see if there's anything okay. within there. Sure, you kick them around, pieces of bone, kind of, and in fact, this bone is so brittle and so calcified that they almost shatter as you kick them with your boots, and uh, 
you're looking through there and you find a couple few, I mean, just a couple of minor trinkets, nothing of, of any kind of value, probably just, uh, you know, items of worship or maybe personal items or, or anything like that. But nothing appears to be uh, of value in here. Just yeah. personal trinkets. I mean, still, you could take them if you want. Uh, they don't bear any value, but uh, it's up to you. No, if it's not uh, if it's not worth anything, I'd be leaving them. Murder <laughs> him. Okay. Is Lord in the party tonight? Oh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, but there's a possibility he jinxed us. I'll just throw that out there. I love it. Um, I'm gonna take a look just uh, through these doors and see what I can see from here. Sure. You peer around this corner through these large brass doors, and as you look in, you can notice first thing that the sl the floor of this room starts to kind of slope downward, and the puddles that were kind of forming on the the door where the door seal is and the, you know the door frame, the water starts to kind of flow down into this area, and the ceiling remains a little a little less as well you know it kind of kind of slopes down with the actual floor itself and the room is actually pretty long it's about a about a 30 to 40 foot room and it's not very wide it's probably about 15 and you can see that all along the sides of the walls all the way up almost to where the ceiling is there's a massive amount of barnacles and you know calcified growths and seashells stuck to the wall you know these massive long barnacles and they're everywhere they're on the floor you know even on some of the ceiling yeah i'd say down to about right here so the lower part of the room there's a, a little bit of uh growth on the ceiling and there's also several of these alcoves again. Now, in these alcoves, there are some pretty strange suits uh, of colorful, bizarre armor. And this armor appears to be made of coral, of shells. And, of course, it's all, you know, calcified uh, and has shells, that's, you know, all over them. And it's just, uh, there's three suits as you kind of peer around the room. There's two on the north wall, and there is also a suit that is on the south wall. And these suit, like I said, these suits are beautiful. And the light off of uh, the the spell actually kind of reflects, and sort of gives this kind of rainbow effect that shines off of the armor. Okay. Like I said, there's a lot of heavy growth, uh, you know, that's in this room and whatnot. Tell me. I'll come back to the group here. Say, like, guys, we got a room up ahead that's sloping downwards. It looks like the gr the room may have at one time been completely submerged underwater. Inside the room, there's these three suits of coral-looking armor. And uh, I don't think any of you are with me in a prior adventure, but I've had a bad bad experience with uh, <laughs> things animating. So, one of you fighter types might want to take the lead into this room. Yeah, I'll check these things out. Well, that's bullshit there, Omi, because the Dungeonology book that I just read <laughs> said the rogues go first. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, only, I'm only one-third rogue. <laughs> I don't mind like the with Manifesh doing a bit of help. Can uh, Shen make a perception or a religion check based on his nautical background to see if he knows anything about this stuff? Sure. In fact, if you would have brought that up a little bit earlier, I would have basically told you the entire story of, of Dagon and how he tried to slaughter all of the, you know, aquatic humanoids, all the merfolk, you know, the Shaloran, with that massive battle in the Sea of Stars. I would have told you that if you would have, if you would have brought that up. Well, it's uh, old Deckhand's tale, huh? Yeah, yeah. Someone I was uh, not on this, Shin. Come on. I, I was absent that day of school. Does the barnacles on the floor make it rough terrain? <laughs> there you go, Shannon. <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> 
Ah, <laughs> oh, too good. So, what do you guys think? Uh, is so there I'm anything? Go up and, and check out this one on the bottom. Omi, you said there is no threats up here. There's right? the you three. You didn't there's see the, the threats. Just the three suits of armor, coral mm -hmm. like cor like a coral armor, and they looked really unusual. Nothing, nothing that I've ever seen before. Yeah, so I'm gonna check them out. Sure. Does barnacles on the floor make it rough terrain? Uh, if you try to, if you're gonna try to do any kind of rapid movement, then yeah, you know you're gonna need to use a little bit of skill to basically an acrobatic check or something like that. Now, as Marcus, as you're as you're checking out these these suits of armor, uh, I mean they they are just they're it's like almost looking at a work of art. You know, these things have uh, no weapons, actually. Just a, they're holding like a shield, they're at attention. They have, you know, beautiful helmets with like a uh, seashells coming off for horns and whatnot. And just a whole array of, and you can see, you know, a couple of snails kind of chugging along on the armor. And it's just looking straight at you and you know and you're looking straight at it well you know as you're looking it over and you know the the helm has these empty has an empty eye hole empty high eye holes you know and as you get a little bit closer and you you know you're kind of looking around all of a sudden these bulbs of red appear in the eye sockets I kind of you know kind of startle you a little bit and then yeah, all of a sudden yeah. Uh, well, all of a sudden, these things start to kind of start shaking, and a lot of the barnacles are starting to fall off, and all of a sudden they snap at attention and raise their shield up, and then lower it down. Roll initiative, because now all of these things are starting to animate, as Omi had warned you. <laughs> Omi's having a PT PTSD flashback. <clears throat> oh, boy. It's got a big ol' holy shit out of that one. Oh, my only one of the night, and then we... Okay, fine. That's nice, Marcus. That's <laughs> nice. Nice little crit. Wow. Omi gets one, too. Oh, holy cool. crap. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I like the old one better. I'll have to be honest, I... I like the old one. That's what happens when your SoundCloud gets repoed. You get cheaper sounds. Anyways, let's uh, continue on. Everybody has uh, <laughs> rolled their initiative. So it looks like Omi, you're going to be first as these three animated suits of armor have now come to life. These eerie red bulbs have appeared in their eye sockets. They have no weapons. They have shields. And they have all come to life. What do you do, Omi? Do I have a shot at armor three from here? Uh, let's see. Where are you at? Sure, you have a shot. Yeah. Okay. I'll go ahead and take a shot at it with my sharp bow. Okay. Yeah, you kind of duck around uh, Shen. You can get a shot off though. Ooh, All right. Bad miss. Yeah. So that is definitely a miss. So just as now, the door, all of a sudden, oh me, the door just absolutely shuts. Poof, and this door is between you and Varus. Now, you know, like I said, you know, sort of like a, uh, a double door. And as you walk in, all of a sudden, this thing slams shut. Poof. Wait, I'm uh, not in there? No, you're not. And I either get knocked out or I get locked out. <laughs> Knocked or locked. <laughs> I like it. Well, here's the thing, Varus. The room that you're in, all of a sudden, the water drops really start to intensify, and you can see that there's a lot more water starting to come into this chamber. And it's starting to, looks like it's starting to fill up. Not at, a, at an exponential rate to where you're going to drown next round or anything like that. But, you know, you would probably think that it would be up to about your ankles after the first round, or maybe halfway up your, uh, you know, maybe halfway up your shin or something like that. Knocked out or locked out? Well, I didn't think of that. 
<laughs> you just happen to be in the wrong place at the wrong time, Varys. <laughs> Jeez. All right, so the door locked. It was damaged. Now, Markish, what are you going to do? As the door slams shut. Yeah, well, I wouldn't hurt it, but um, I'll come and comment to Omi, like, hey, these ones came to life as well. And uh, I'm going to... First reaction is to take a step back and um, take a swing at, at the thing that came alive in front of me. Sure, go for it. <gasps> Poor Varus. I, you know... I I didn't even didn't even think of that. Ooh, horrible miss. Oh, yeah. Anything else for you? All right, Varus. This door has shut in front of you. I'm gonna look see if there's any hidden switches or anything to open it. All right, you can give me an investigation check, or you can do perception as well. Whatever is best for you. I'll give Medici of uh, 14. <clears throat> All right, so you're looking everywhere, and you do not see anything. And you're, you know, you're kind of splashing the water away, looking for any kind of pl pressure plates. You're looking, you know, along the seam of the door. Oh, however, the door is kind of loose because, like I said, it was damaged uh, pretty heavily. But you do not see any any kind of uh, switches or, or anything like that. How about uh, Shen? What say you, Shen? Um, well, since I'm wounded, I guess I will take a potion of healing. Okay. So, I will say this, Varys. In this alcove back here, all of a sudden, all of these bones, it looks like they're starting to form a skeleton. A single skeleton. I forgot to uh, tell you that. So, all right. So it looks like a Shen. You've used the healing potion. Yep. And then, can, do I can I still attack, or does that take my turn? Uh, that takes an action to take the actual potion. So yes, I'm all gonna. Right put this skeleton here for you. So Varys, you've got a, uh, a skeleton coming at you. But it's formed in the alcove, and it is stepping down from the alcove to, to engage you. Alright, so let's see. Uh, animated armor. Uh, the first animated armor basically is, is standing almost where it is. It stands up a little bit to uh, confront Kalash. And it will uh, slam you a couple of times. Let's have it set. Right. Let's see. Uh... Ooh, I like that. So it slams you once. And it misses with a 14. It follows up with an uppercut trying to slam you again. And it misses. The second suit of animated armor moves up a little bit and goes to attack Markish. And the first slam, oh my gosh, that is a crit. Ouch. Yeah. All right, so you're going to take some damage there, Markish. You're going to take a total of nine bludgeoning damage as it follows up with another hit and strikes again. But this time you're able to, uh, I think that first one kind of woke you up and you... Uh, were missed by the second attack. Now the the third suit of animated armor, the one that you're engaged to already, uh, is going to s swipe at you a couple of times, missing the first time, and the second time uh, hitting with a 19. So you're going to take a little bit more bludgeoning damage minimum at three. You're heavily damaged now, uh, about halfway. So all right, Kalash, you're up now. Okie dokie. Well, in that case, I'm going to hex the guy next to me, uh, Armin 1, and I'm going to give him, I think, Dex disadvantage against. Um, and I will attack him with my uh, Warhammer. Alright. 